ಹರಡಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ವಿ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಯು ಟು ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಧ ಗೋಪಿನಾಥ ಟೆಂಪಲ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸೇಕ್ರೆಡ್ ಡೇ ಆಫ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಗೋರ್ ಪೂರ್ಣಿಮಾ ದಿ ಅಪಿಯರೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಮಹಾಪ್ರಭು the two great biographers shilabrandaban das thakur and shri krishna das kaviraj goswami who have taken their information from lord nityananda prabhu from raghunath das goswami from the notes of swarup damodar goswami from the book of marari gupta his diary they compile these two literatures shri chaitanya bhagavat and shri chaitanya charitamrita and from that time all of our great enlightened compassionate acharyas have given great focus and emphasis on the lessons and the stories we were discussing this morning shri chaitanya mahaprabhu swarup damodar goswami in a beautiful prayer he glorifies shri krishna chaitanya who appeared from the womb of mother sachi he came like the rising sun to give light in this age of kali and he came to give what no other incarnation has ever presented to the world the most intimate confidential pastimes or rasas of love as the gopis in the residence of Vrindavan and he has given this opportunity without considering who is fit or unfit whatever one's geographical residence may be bhakti vinod thakur in one of his beautiful prayers he describes how shri chaitanya mahaprabhu and his associates in the early morning whoever they would meet they would give this simple request jeev jago jeev jago gora chandra bole pisa chira kole maya ah pisa chira kole kota nidra jayo maya pisa chira kole wake up sleeping souls nitya siddha krishna prema sajja kapunai sravanadi sudhi chiti kodiye yatai that the nature of the atma the soul is we are eternally loving servants of krishna that is our only natural condition from this higher from this highest perspective any amount of material prosperity attainment of yogic powers or even liberation is not our constitutional natural position to be enjoying and suffering in this world is unnatural to the soul and even to be liberated from all the sufferings of this world is not the complete potential of the soul but to know krishna to love krishna to feel krishna's love either directly or through his various expansions like ram narayan that is our nature 
Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to give this highest revelation in the most intimate spirit of the residents of Vrindavan. Something so rare. If we just follow his simple instructions. Parama karuna pahundui jana nitai gorachandra. <clears throat> Lochandas Thakur was a disciple of Narahari Sarakar. We'll sing about him later during Gaur Arti. During the Arti of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu on the banks of the river Ganga, he would do the seva of fanning the Lord with Chamara. He was in constant absorption in the highest ecstasies of love. A gopi of Brindavan who descended to this world and was one of the personal associates of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He was the guru of Lochandas Thakur. Lochandas Thakur was associating with the personal, intimate friends and devotees of the Lord. And he wrote his book, Chaitanya Mangal, and many beautiful prayers. In this prayer, Paramakaruna, this is the essence of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's incarnation. He's not only Krishna coming to taste the sweetness of Radha, but he's bestowing upon the world Paramakaruna the highest compassion, the greatest kindness to all living beings. Saba Avatara, Sara Siromani, that he's the essence of all incarnations. And his process is so simple, chanting, and dancing. One time Srila Prabhupada was explaining about how simple and enjoyable this process is. Simply chanting and dancing. And some of the devotees were confused. There are these four regulative principles and so many temptations and so many aversions and so many problems and what to speak of trying to give this message to others. Some, sometimes we're put in jail and sometimes we're risking our lives. And sometimes devotees living with them. <laughs> <clears throat> devotees like to complain. <laughs> But they're not supposed to complain. So the devotees were kind of complaining to Prabhupada about all the problems. And you're saying it's just simply joyful dancing. And, and they started listing some of the problems and some of the challenges and some of the uh, difficulties. And Prabhupada said, no, simply chanting and dancing. <laughs> what does that mean? That's best answer you could possibly get. That means Srila Prabhupada speaking from a self-realized perspective. And we're supposed, we may not be self-realized, <clears throat> but how do we become self-realized? By learning how to see through the eyes of self-realized people. Otherwise we'll always be under the mental conceptions anchoring, lamenting, accepting, rejecting, always looking for something else. It's the chanchalam nature of the mind. Always looking for an excuse, a reason to not surrender. And if you're looking for excuses, Maya Devi, she has limitless supply to provide. And she will provide. 
She'll provide it through your own mind. She'll provide it through other people. She'll provide it through so, so many literatures and so many advertisements. And she can provide through every molecular particle some reason to find an excuse. That is her power. She's the diluting energy. Mahajano yena katasapan. Therefore, it's important that we see through the eyes of what we hear from self-realized souls. So devotees were listing their problems and Prabhupada said, no, just <laughs> chanting and dancing. Which means this Sankirtan movement is such a benediction. Considering that the Jivatma may have been wandering for millions and millions of births, trying to find some enjoyment, try to avoid pleasure within material creation, finally reaches the human form of life. And in the human form of life, to, to, to actually have the association of devotees of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and to actually open your heart to receive this message, Durlabha Manava Janma Lobhya Samsari, it's very, very rare. And we're given the Harinam Maha Mantra, we're given the association of devotees. It's so rare, it's so precious, that if we understand its value, then all the little things that trouble us become so insignificant, they're practically non-existent. In the presence of the Son of Krishna, the darkness of Maya cannot exist. So this is the importance of faith when we have faith in the value of what we're given, then yes, following four regulative principles may be difficult, but it's really easy compared, considering what the price of love of God was in previous times. All you have to do is chant and dance and following these simple little principles. If we forget the value of what we have, then other things seem really, really significant. So yes, people insult us. And it's so painful to the heart. And it's an excuse. Why? How can I live in this situation? Why is Krishna doing this to me? I remember when our dear brother, Stoka Krishna Prabhu, was passing from the world. He was only about 32 years old. Just had a baby, was married, was dying of cancer. He was crippled, paralyzed, it's part of his body, a lot of pain couldn't eat. He could have said, why is this happening to me? I'm a devotee. But he was smiling at me. He said, why is Krishna doing this to me? Why is Krishna doing this to me? Why is he so kind? I didn't deserve to chant so many names of Krishna. I didn't deserve to have so many years of association. I didn't deserve to go to Mangalarti so many hundreds of times and go to so many hundreds of Srimad Bhagavatam classes and chant so many thousands and thousands of rounds of the Maha Mantra. I didn't deserve to read Srila Prabhupada's books and to have them and to have so many opportunities for so much service. I'm simply grateful. That's what he was telling me. He wasn't thinking about the challenges and problems because he was focusing on his good fortune. Comparatively, what are our problems? And yet we complain. Nothing to complain about. <laughs> 
Some people are getting crushed and... Little things we make so big, only when we forget what's really big. <clears throat> so to keep our mind focused on the blessing that Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda and their associates have given us. Therefore Prabhupada said, no, none of these things are very relevant. Just chanting and dancing. <laughs> This is the eternal activities of the spiritual world. Go locate a premadana harinam sankirtan. This sankirtan movement has descended from Goloka, the highest planet of Vaikuntha. These are the eternal pastimes of the gopis and the gopis of gopas of Vrindavan. They perform sankirtan. In fact, they chant this maha mantra glorifying Radharani and Krishna. And they dance. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he brought this beautiful benediction down. <clears throat> In the Kali Santarana Upanishad, it is stated that in this age of Kali, the best medicine is this 32-syllable, 16-word mantra, the Maha Mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. It cures us of the illness of ignorance, of envy, of lust and greed and arrogance. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, as the physician, he not only gave us the medicine to wake up our dormant love, the ananda we're all seeking, anandam buddhivaradhanam, but he also gave us a prescription like every doctor of how to take the medicine. Just like we have our Bhaktivedanta hospital, we have Ayurvedic doctors and allopathic doctors and homeopathic doctors and acupuncture doctors and naturopathy doctors. And so many doctors. We have dentists. <laughs> but when they give medicine, they also give you a prescription how to take it. So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave us his prescription. Very simple. Nam nam akari bahuda nija sarva shakti stadrapi tan niyami dasmara nena kala etha drishita vakripa bhagavan namapi dur daiva mitri sami hajini The first thing is we should have faith in the medicine. That the name of God is non different than God. The name Kali Kale Namarupe Krishna Avatar. Krishna has descended in his name. Sri Radha has come present in her name. It's not just a bridge to take us from one place to another and then we don't need the bridge anymore. When they asked Srila Prabhupada, what do you hope to achieve by chanting Hare Krishna? Prabhupada said, our goal of chanting Hare Krishna is to chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> because it is so merciful. Krishna himself has descended with all of his potencies, all of his power, all of his beauty, all of his pastimes, all of his love are within the name. And Oma Pavitra Pavitrova, when we chant Krishna's name, we are remembering Krishna. And when we remember the all-pure, we become purified. So in the beginning stages, we chant to become pure. But what happens when we're pure? Then we, Rupa Goswami, who descended from Goloka Vrindavan, what did he say? His realization of chanting Hare Krishna. When I chant the two names Krishna, I desire many, many tongues. I do not know how much nectar 
the two syllables Krishna have produced. When that sound vibration enters my ears, I desire millions and millions of ears, and when it comes into my heart, it conquers my whole life. When we actually become pure, then we want to chant Hare Krishna forever. Kirtaniya Sada Hare. We can't stop chanting because we feel Krishna, we taste Krishna, we see Krishna, we experience Krishna. Krishna reciprocates in the name. And in the spiritual world, everyone is chanting Krishna's names in love. And Lord Chaitanya says, there's no hard and fast rules. Some very simple principles just to keep us from recontaminating ourselves. But then he, he ends this particular prayer in a very special way. God, you have come in your name. There's no hard and fast rules. But I am so unfortunate, I have no attraction for your names. He's opening the doors for us to understand that without humility, there can be no real gratitude. And without gratitude, our heart cannot actually receive the mercy of the holy names. We should feel ourselves unqualified. And then in the next verse, he gives the most important prescription for taking the medicine. Enechi asadi maya nashi barolagi harinam mahamantra laudumi ma. Trinada pisuni chena taror ibasehishnana. Amani namana dena kirtaniya sadhari. If you don't have that, it doesn't matter what else you know. It's irrelevant to Krishna. Bhakti means making ourselves relevant to Krishna. Not making ourselves relevant to our own false egos. To be humbler, more humble than a blade of grass. Now this sounds quite inconceivable and impossible. How can a human being, especially in Kali Yuga, especially from Mumbai <laughs> or America. How could we be more humble than a straw in the street? I mean, to become like that is inconceivable, but to be more humble than a blade of grass? Is it possible? Say Hari Bol if you think it's possible. <laughs> Say Hari Bol if you think it's impossible. Okay. Definitely the impossible voters were more blissful than the possible. Why is that? Because it's impossible for us. The, the Maya is very strong and Maya controls us through our own false egos. But when we realize it's impossible for us, then we humble ourselves. Then we, we actually, when we realize how impossible it is for us to do it, then we really start becoming more humble than a blade of grass. And by Krishna's grace, we can have, we can, he gives us that humility. Srila Prabhupada often told us, just be sincere. This was one of his most prominent instructions. He gave us so much philosophy and so much practical advice and so much culture and tradition. 
where he would ask us, please take it very seriously. And what does it mean to be sincere? It means to not have any ulterior motives. And you actually have to be pretty humble to admit that you have ulterior motives. And when you humble yourselves to admit that you have ulterior motives, then you can start to become free from your ulterior motives. Does that make sense? I don't know. <laughs> That's what humility is. When we are sincere. When we are sincere and we simply want to become purified, we simply want to please Krishna, we don't have a selfish agenda, we don't have ulterior secret motives for what we're doing, we're simple at heart. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada and our Srila Prabhupada, they emphasize this principle. The, the basic fundamental foundational quality of being a Vaishnav is simplicity. Simplicity means no duplicity. To be sincere. I just want to serve. I just want to please the Vaishnavas. I just want to help others. I just want to make Krishna happy. And we really, really try our best. Krishna tells in Bhagavad Gita, if we just surrender in this mood, he will pre preserve whatever little we have and he will protect what we, what we he will subsidize what we lack. Provide. That is Krishna consciousness. When we are actually sincere, and really trying our best without motivations, with a simple heart. The gopis were simple. Kolaveta Sridhar was simple. Ambarish Maharaj, the great king, was so simple. <laughs> he had no agenda. Durvas Muni was insulting him. He was about to murder him. And Ambarish Maharaj was Krishna, Whatever you want to do with me, I'm happy. But please forgive him and make, give him your mercy. That's a simple heart. No selfishness. Vidura, what a simple heart he had. He was always trying to help his brother and always trying to help the Pandavas and always trying to serve what Krishna wanted him to do. And he was blasphemed, he was insulted, he was, his mother was criticized in front of him, and then he was exiled from his kingdom. He had to leave his family, his home, everything. But such a simple heart. Krishna, this is what you want, he went on pilgrimage. He really tried his best. He never gave up. But when he saw there was nothing he could do in this way, he just gave his heart to Krishna. And when the opportunity came, he came right back and gave his full love and compassion to Dhritarashtra to help him to become Krishna conscious. It's a simple heart. This is what a Vaishnava is, Prahlad. What a simple heart he had. He couldn't tell a lie. His father asked him, what is the best thing you learned in school? All he had to say was economics. <laughs> <laughs> one word, just one word. And his father, oh, oh, oh my son, <laughs> giving him crowns and jewels and protection and happiness. But Prahlad was so simple. He said, the best thing I learned in school was that we should be Krishna conscious. <laughs> and because you, Father, because you're identifying your temporary 
dying body as yourself and you're considering all the things in relationship to this body as yours, you have fallen into a deep, dark well where nobody can hear you or save you. You should go to Vrindavan <laughs> and worship Krishna. Would have been easier to say economics. He said, my dear father, you should smear the dust. You should do abhishek with the dust of the lotus feet of devotees who love Krishna, who have no material attachments. Otherwise, you will just continue chewing that which has already been chewed, and you will not get love for Krishna. So Hiranyapashipu tried to murder him. He insulted him. He did everything to destroy Prahlad on every level. And in the end, Prahlad just prayed to Nursingadev, give my father liberation. That's sincerity. Mahajano yena gata sabanta. We're supposed, we can't imitate, but that's the principles we follow. If we have a simple heart and we're sincere and we value that love, that unconditional service as the true purpose and wealth and joy of life. If we just do that, it's so simple. Then by Krishna's grace, he gives us this trinada bisunichina. By Krishna's grace, he awakens the nature of the soul. The soul is more tolerant and forgiving than a tree. The awakened soul does offer all respect to others and expect none in return. Because he knows that satisfies Krishna. And in that state, kirtaniya sadhari, we could chant constantly. So when Srila Prabhupada said like this, it is simply joyful, chanting and dancing. The benediction is so great that whatever difficulties, whatever challenges, whatever pains may be there in trying to follow are completely insignificant compared to what we receive. But they seem very significant and very troubling and very distracting if we forget the value of what we have. That is why satsang is so important. What is the greatest service devotees could do for each other? Machchita matkata pranda bodhiyanta paraspara katiyantashchamam nityam tushyanti charamantija. Devotees, they are beyond this world because they're always very eager to enlighten each other, enliven each other, inspire each other by reminding us of the value of what we have. Harikata, Harikirtan. Through events like Gaur Purnima, when we all come together, we help to remind each other, our friends, our family members at home, even husband and wife, I don't know so much about the dynamics of that relationship. But I know from hearing. <laughs> Srila Prabhupada said, when a husband and wife are sharing Krishna with each other, their home becomes Vaikunta. It's not like Vaikunta, it is Vaikunta. <clears throat> When a husband and wife are actually helping to inspire, encourage faith in Krishna to each other, through chanting, through hearing, through seva together, the home is Vaikuntha, the spiritual world. Bhaktivinoda Thakur had ten children, and Bhagavati was his wife. Can you imagine being a mother? Men, you try to imagine this too. Can you imagine being a mother for 10 children? That means you have to stay home all day and take care of them. 
Husbands, they just go out and work and let the wife do that stuff. That's oftentimes what happens. But can you imagine 10 children? You have babies and you have people getting hurt and you have people getting sick and you have ba- yeah, they're, and they're, what children do. But they had such a Krishna conscious household, Bhaktivinoda Thakur in Shuddha Bhagata. He says when he comes home, he sees his house, his family as Goloka Vrindavan. Hare Krishna. And that's the way Brahmachari Ashram should be too. Some differences in specifics, but <laughs> but the spirit is the same to share Krishna with each other. If we share Krishna together, we we help each other to realize and and to remember the great value of what we've been given. Krishna has descended in his name with all of his opulences and all I have to do is chant with sincere and humble devotion and love of Krishna. After millions and millions of births, who cares if there's a little pain here or a little challenge there or a little failure to get my expectation here or a little insult there. So what? If I just chant Hare Krishna sincerely, I will go back home, back to Godhead. No more birth, no more death. It's no problem. But Maya is always trying to take us away from that understanding. All we have to do is recognize the value of Krishna's grace in our life. Srila Prabhupada gave us that. And stop fighting with each other. <laughs> because Krishna doesn't like that. It doesn't matter who wins and who loses. What matters is, is Krishna pleased? That's all. Parama karuna pahundu ichana. They are most merciful because they've given such a simple life, lifestyle by which we can find the supreme treasure of Krishna's love in this very lifetime. And while we're seeking it through our own sadhana and our own seva, a very inseparable part of that is sharing it with others. On this day or night, it's kind of between day and night, (laughs) Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared. We discussed Briefly this morning, the three internal reasons and three external reasons why why Krishna took birth as Lord Chaitanya in this world. Now let us briefly discuss how it happened. When Sri Krishna decided to assume the mood of Sri Radha's Mahabhav and come to this world, and spread his own love and open the whole, the door to his abode of Vrindavan to the world to come. He did it at the same time as the Yuga Avatar. As the Yuga Avatar, he was spreading the chanting of the holy names and through the chanting of holy names, he was giving us entrance into the spiritual. But before he came, he sent several of his intimate, eternal associates from the spiritual world to prepare for his advent. He sent Balaram Nityananda. He sent his grandfather from Golokhar Vrindavan the cowherd man Parjanya as Upendra Mishra, 
Upendra Misha had seven sons. He lived in Srihatta, which is now in Bangladesh. <clears throat> the fifth of his seven sons was Jagannath Mishra, who was sent by the Lord. Jagannath Mishra is Nanda Maharaj from Goloka. Jagannath Mishra was a great learned scholar and a very, very deep, pure-hearted devotee, as was his father, Upendra. Jagannath Mishra, by the calling of the Lord within his heart, he shifted his residence to the bank of the Ganga in Navadweep. There, he met Nilambar Chakravarti, who was Garga Muni in Krishna's Leela, the family priest of the Yadus, and who performed the name-giving ceremony for Krishna Balaram and Gokul. The daughter of Nilambar Chakravarti was Sachi Devi. Yashoda Mai descended as Sachi. Hanuman appeared as Marari Gupta. Mukunda and Basudev Dutt. Adwaitacharya, who is Sadashiva Mahavishnu Brahma, appeared as Haridas Thakur, Brishabhanu Maharaj, the father of Sri Radha in the spiritual world, appeared as Pundarit Vidyanidhi. There's a beautiful story that when Sri Sri Radha Rani and Krishna would perform their Leela in the most confidential kunjas of Sri Braj Bhumi. Places where even the Sakis would, and the Manjaris would give Radharani and Krishna their own space. Radha, Radha Gopinath would perform these pastimes under a Kalpa Briksha tree. That Kalpa Briksha tree appeared as Madhavendra Puri and Ishwara Puri. Paramananda Puri was Uddhava from the spiritual world. These devotees all came to prepare for Lord Chaitanya's arrival. Adwaitacharya and Haridas Thakur were chanting and they were praying and for, for Krishna to come. Srivas Thakur is Narada Muni. And his three brothers are Parvat Muni and other great sages. They were praying with all their hearts for Krishna to come to save the, 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 the fallen souls of this age of Kali through Kirtan. Jagannath Mishra married Sachi Devi. They lived in the bank of Ganga. They had eight daughters. Just after the birth, each of these daughters died. Can you imagine? Any of you losing six daughters consecutively and having no children. But they never gave up their faith. Krishna shows the world the nature of a Vaishnav by putting his greatest devotees in difficult situations. For us, we're put in difficult situations because it helps us to become cleansed of our karmas and it also helps us to realize and humble ourselves and depend on Krishna and cry out for his mercy. For the great souls, they're teaching us how to do that. <clears throat> So they performed 
very, very sincere puja to get a child. Why did they want a child so much? Because Krishna wanted to take birth as a child. It was Krishna who was putting that desire in their heart. But they didn't know. Finally, they had a son who was an expansion of Balaram. They named him Vishwarup, and he was so beautiful and so wonderful. And Srila Prabhupada explains that usually if you really, really do some serious tapasya and puja to get something from God, and then when God gives it to you, oh, now I could relax. I don't need God so much anymore. But that's not Jagannath Mishra and Sachi Devi's example. When they received the blessing of a son, they increased their puja and their devotion to show their gratitude. In the month of Mag, in the year 1485, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, appeared within the heart and the womb of Sachi Devi. When she became pregnant, she became effulgent. Jagannath Misha was speaking to her. He said, I had a dream. In this dream, everybody please listen carefully. In this dream, Jagannath Mishra said, I saw the spiritual world enter into my heart. And then the spiritual world was transferred from my heart to your heart. And then you became pregnant. I can understand it's going to be a very special child. And then Jagannath Misha said to his wife, Sachi Mata, usually when I go outside, you know, I'm just one of so many millions of Brahmins here in Navadvi. But now wherever I go, people are bowing to me and people are giving me special gifts. And Sachi Devi, she said, when I go to take rest, and sometimes even not, I see what appears to be celestial beings offering puja and prayers to our child. They just became completely blissful because the Lord had accepted residence in their hearts in such a special way. Through, through Sachi Devi and Jagannath Mishra, Krishna would appear in his most magnanimous, munificent form to show compassion to the world. But nothing happens easy. Usually, how many months until baby comes out? Nine months, 10 months, 11 months, 12 months. The baby was inside Sachimata for 13 months. And there was no indication <laughs> that he was coming out. So Jagannath Mishra and Sachimata went to Nilambar Chakravarti, Sachi's father, who was the greatest astrologer. And he performed some calculations. And he said, according to my calculation, this baby is going to deliver the whole world. A very special child. He's waiting for the most auspicious moment to appear, and he will appear soon. Now in India, the eclipse of the moon is considered inauspicious. And because it's considered inauspicious and people don't want to get, I've seen so many rituals and so many superstitions and so many things surrounding lunar eclipses. I've been to places where they put 
black paper over every window and close the doors. And any food that was prepared at the time of the eclipse, it becomes like, like, like supernaturally poisoned or something. <laughs> so they throw away all the food. A lot of, I'm not, I'm not either for or against, I'm just saying this is what people do. But in those days, 500 years ago, when the eclipse came, even the people who were just completely materialistic, even people who were atheistic, even people who just worshipped demigods for total material purposes, even people who were impersonally trying to just, you know, become God, when it was time for the eclipse, they all went to the river Ganga and loudly chanted the names of Lord Hudi. Hey, hey, hey.